Hey there, this is Akshay Madan and welcome back to a new video. And in this video, again, we are going to solve one data set from Kegel.com. And this uh, data set is regarding the red wine quality. So basically, we are going to predict the quality of the red wine using different, different features. And uh, in this video, we are not again going to take simple model. And we are going to take three models and we are going to find which model works best for our data set, right? So without wasting more time, if you are new on this channel, uh, please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. And let's go to kegel.com so that I can show you the data set which I'm using for this video. So this is red wine quality. So basically you have to, and this uh, data set is uh, by UCI machine learning. Uh, and it has also published many other data sets. So you can check that out. And this data set was updated three years ago. So that's a pretty old uh, data set. So we are going to work on it and we are going to first of all analyze and visualize our data different different features we are again going to see the the relationship between the features and our output that is our quality and then we are going to predict it so we are going to take three models uh, let's see what are they and you can just take a glimpse of the data set from here and now let's go to my notebook okay so as I've already told you many times, you can copy the file path that is CSV file from here and you can paste it when you need to call your data frame when you need to build your data frame, right? So first of all, I'm importing NumPy and Pandas as usual. Then I'm going to let me change the font size. It is a little smaller, right? Now it is good. Now what I'm doing, I'm again, um, okay, I've again uh, imported Pandas, no problem. Then I'm importing Matplotlib and I'm a dark font. I'm a dark background lover, so I'm using a dark background. Then I'm importing Seaborn so that I can build my graphs much better way in a much better way. Then I'm going to build my data frame. So I have called it DF, that is a variable. And I've stored my whole CSV file into this using Panda, using Pandas, right? So pg.read CSV, that is a simple function. You can uh, write it uh, like this. Then I'm going to print a, a head part of my data frame. So I can see that there are certain features. Uh, fixed acidity is there, volatile acidity is there, citric acid is there, residential, residual sugar is there. Chlorides are there and different different. So pH is also there. And lastly, we have the quality. So that is our target class. We have to predict that quality of a certain wine glass or wine feature using these features, right? Then first of all, I'm going to print the shape of my data set. So I'm seeing that there are around 1600 rows and 12 columns. So there are around 11 features, 11 independent variables you can see and one dependent that is my quality, right? Okay. Then after this, I'm going to build a figure. Let me decrease the size yeah then what i'm doing i'm using plt.figure and giving it a figure size 12 by 6 and i'm going to use a count plot function i'm going to see uh, which quality class that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and how many are there i don't know which quality is uh, 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 present in the larger number larger quantity right so i can see that the quality with the grade 5 is uh, present at the largest amount or the maximum amount which is around uh, 670, more than 670 uh, wine uh, or, we, or you can say that more than 670 rows belong to quality 5, right? Simple. Then after this quality 6 is there and if I say the minimum 3, 3 uh, uh, class of quality is having the uh, least count, right? Okay, I have got a simple idea of my quality class. Then I am uh, building a bar plot uh, with the uh, alcohol versus quality so i can see that as the uh, qu quantity of alcohol is increasing my quality is increasing or you can see if my quality is increasing that influences that the alcohol content in that wine is more right as you can see the eighth quality uh, class that is the quality eight is having the highest alcohol content right then seven is there then six is there then five is there and like that right so this was simple analysis of alcohol versus quality then what I'm doing, I'm uh, uh, building a scatter plot uh, of pH versus citric acid, right? So what I'm doing, and this is, this is generally a chemistry thing that uh, if my pH is decreasing, that means my acidic nature of that uh, solution is increasing, right? And if my pH is more, that means the basic nature of that solution is more. So I can see that as my pH is increasing, the citric acid is also increasing. Sorry, the citric acid is citric acid content is decreasing. And my pH is decreasing. As you can see, there is a relationship. So as my citric acid is uh, around uh, 1, that means the acidic content is increasing, then my pH is decreasing, right? So for a citric acid quantity 1, my pH is around 2.5. And if my citric acid is very low, that is 0, then my pH is around 4, right? 
so that was a uh, simple chemistry thing then so this was a scatter plot okay so we have visualized a little more data now it's time to visualize the whole complete data set and the relationship between quality and other features right so i have drawn a simple pair plot uh, and just given it the parameter of df so it is going to take each feature and it is going to plot the uh, graph uh, against other features right so now i am interested in quality so let's go to quality so here is my quality the last thing as you can see so first one is quality versus uh, fixed acidity fixed acidity right so i can see that uh, quality of 5 quality of 5 class is uh, having the highest number of fixed acidity that is around more than 16 around 16 right okay and like this you can see that other features are also plotted against the quality class right so you can just uh, visualize them like this each and every feature is plotted okay then what i am doing i am drawing a heat map so that i can find the uh, so that i can find which uh, which other features are having a good relationship with my quality right so i can see that my quality is having a good relationship with alcohol so i have already seen that as my alcohol was increasing the quality was increasing so it is having a good relationship let's say i do it anot is equal to 2 that means annotation is equal to 2 so that i can see what is the relationship number okay now i can see that fixed acidity is having 0.12 then uh, volatile acidity is having a negative relationship then citric acid 0.23 and i can see that alcohol is having a uh, very good number that is 0.48 right and quality was uh, obvious that it is going to have one relationship with quality okay so alcohol then sulfates then some more features are there they are having a good relationship with my quality because it is seen right then after this what i am doing now i am uh, going on data preprocessing so first of all i am giving uh, my two variables x and y the respective data so x is going to have the independent variables as usual so I'm dropping all the uh, columns except the quality and then I'm giving my quality column to my Y, right? So that's usual thing we do every time. So now let's move on to data pre-processing part. So first of all, I'm going to handle my imbalance in my data. So as you can see above that uh, <clears throat> the count of fifth quality is very high like this around 670 but the count of third quality eighth quality fourth quality seventh quality are not that good right they are around 50 40 30 right so i have to tackle this imbalance in my data this um, this type of data is not uh, good for feeding into the model right so i have to um, uh, tackle this imbalance in my data so for that i'm going to use oversampling in which i'm just going to give you a basic idea in this uh, video because this video is regarding solving the problem so let me give you a general idea so assume that uh, these are your data points of fifth quality. So they are in very good amount because they are present in the largest quantity. So assume that this is your cluster one, which is uh, uh, belongs to your quality number five. And assume that this is your cluster number two, which is for your quality number one, three, seven, which are not in that much good quantity, right? So they are very less, uh, they are present in very less count, right? So this is your quality number one, or three or seven right so this type of thing is not uh, good for feeding into your model so i have to tackle this out because the quantity of fifth the quality is very much high but the quality of but the quantity of one three and seven are very very less so what i'm going to do i'm going to use this technique in which i'm going to put that same uh, data points one three seven that at, at the same location only like i'm going to let me change the color i'm going to put on that same location right these points i'm going to put on the same location like this and not only one two or three i'm going to put it in a large quantity so that the ratio is becomes one is to one of all my features right of all my uh, that classification that fifth quality or one three or seven so that the ratio becomes same right that is a good that is a good So this is the technique that we use to tackle the imbalance in your data. So this is called oversampling, right? Because I'm going to uh, increase the amount of samples which are present in low quantity, right? Yeah, I hope it is clear, but I'm going to make a separate video regarding this. Don't worry. 
Then I'm going to do a very simple thing that is splitting my data into training part and testing part. So as you can see, I'm going, I'm doing it. So XRES and virus are storing the uh, new values because I've used lower sampling and I'm going to give this XRES and virus to my train test split. Test size is 0.2, random split is 0. Then I'm going to use standard scalar because my, I have seen that my uh, values are not uh, scaled down. I have to scale them down so that they are uh, so that they can be fit into the model nicely. So I'm going to use standard scalar from my sclan.preprocessing. I'm going to scale down the x train and x test data, right? Because they are the independent variables. So I have to scale them down. Scale them down. Then I'm going to import sclan uh, dot metrics import accuracy score. Uh, I'm importing it because I want to test the accuracy of different different models on which I'm working. For that, uh, now I'm coming on to model building. So first of all, we are going to three, make three models, logistic regression, decision tree and random forest. And we are going to check their accuracies, right? And not only this, you should not just restrict themselves on these three models, which I'm teaching. You can just make, uh, explore all the data sets on which you want to work on and you can test the accuracy. So what I'm going to do, first of all, let's check out of logistic regression. So in logistic regression, they're basically used when you need to solve the classification problems. And that's the same data set we are working on. There are different, different uh, uh, classifications, right? Fifth quality, one, two, three, right? Like this. So that's why I'm using logistic regression. So for that, I'm defining a separate variable. I'm storing the model. Then I'm going to fit the data, X train, standard, and Y train. Then I'm going to predict the X test values, X test standard values. And I'm going to store all these predictions into my predictions variable. Then I'm going to find the accuracy score of my Y test and predictions. Then I've seen that a very low accuracy is coming. That is around 57%. I'm not satisfied with it. So I'm going to come on to the next uh, model on which I'm working. That is a decision tree classifier. So here I'm seeing uh, that that same thing I've done. Define your model, fit your model, predict your model and find the accuracy. Same all the steps. So I've seen that 79% accuracy is coming. Okay, cool, cool. Then I'm going to come on random forest classifier and same thing I've done. And then I've seen that 86% accuracy is coming. So that's a very good accuracy for now. So this video was for these three models only, but uh, you, sh you can work on your own notebook and just uh, explore another and uh, different and different uh, models. It's totally up to you, right? So I think this much is enough for this video. So till the next content, keep coding, keep innovating and thanks a lot.